Greetings guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monette and this is my channel Evolve with Monette. I am a professional intuitive empath who is so happy to share some yummy energy with you today and we're going to get right into the topic of the video which is about covert narcissism and addiction and when those moments collide. Uh, I've really had to do a deep dive as I do when something is amiss I really spent some time trying to figure out what's going on and I had no choice because I was watching a loved one, um, a family member that I had to distance myself from suffer uh, through addiction. I understand addiction. I deal with my own addictions. I'm very candid on my channel. Uh, I talk about my addiction. My addiction is definitely food addiction. I've been to OA. I've done all the things. Um, and still I am dealing with my addiction. So I am not poo-pooing anybody else's addiction. I am not saying I'm better or more holy or that I'm more evolved even because clearly I'm not. But it's with that candidness that I come to you to say I am an expert on addictions and the cravenous ways that it will eat you from the inside out and destroy relationships. Now, when you are multiplying your addictions, it is sure that you are going to speed up your demise. I have that addiction. I deal with codependency. There's a few, but I understand that when you're adding substance abuse, you're dealing with a different thing. So I will always tell my truth before I tell anybody else's. That is my promise to you and to myself. It's important for me to be integral. So now let's dive in. I watched a person that I used to love very much really devolve into addiction. And there were moments when she would cry out for help and she would say to me the truth, like it's maybe worse than you know, or it's maybe worse than you think. We lived at a great distance from each other. So I wasn't there to see or know every aspect of her life. But my angels knew and my intuition knew. But like with all addictions, when you really start to get deep into it, what will happen is the world will know. Okay, you can't hide your addiction. And I speak lovingly of this person because it is a person that I have, in fact, loved. And the thing about it is, I don't know that they loved me, but that's not really what the video is about. And when you're in addiction, you love yourself. Addiction makes us selfish. It's the truth. I will say that I found out over the last few years that I was dealing with someone who was a covert narcissist. She needed a lot of attention. I always knew that she needed a lot of attention. And I thought with my yummy magical empath energy that I could just pour into her infinitesimally and she would be fulfilled. Uh, that was not the case. <laughs> that was not the case. It wasn't all my attention she needed. She needed the world's attention. And she was like a child and she didn't mind getting it in any way she could. Um, I have another video here where I discuss watching her 20 years ago flit around a bar and make out with everybody's partners. And I, and another person I knew then had to put out these fires and it, it, it kind of has come full circle. Because in the last few years, I was shadow boxing in the dark and putting out fires of hers that I didn't know she was setting, that she was gaslighting me and denying she was setting. And I didn't really have a lot of clarity. And that brings me to the point. When covert narcissism and addiction collide, the mask will slip. In many ways, her addictions gave me clarity, crystal clarity that I could not debate that I was dealing with somebody who was dealing with a lot more than I think they realized. There are a lot of things that can be said about the place she found herself in. And I'll tell you as an empath and an intuitive who has premonitions and will always move a mountain to protect my loved ones, I warned her. I said, be careful of the company first that you're keeping. Be careful 
of the things that go bump in the night. Be careful of the things that are taking you out and away from the light. I taught her about the light. I taught her about her angels. I felt that she deserved love, even though I knew that there were things that were off balance in our relationship. And that speaks more to my own codependent addiction than it does to hers at that moment. But I warned her. I feel like what happened for her was a perfect storm. She got involved with people and I warned her about those people. And I told her specifically, it wasn't hate about the person. In fact, she ingratiated me with the person and asked me to give that person a reading, which I did. So I really got to see into that person's energy. She thought she was doing a reconnaissance mission on me. Nay, nay. Uh, in any case, I, I warned her and I said, you need to be really careful because what's happening here, this person is going to cost you a lot. She's going to be very expensive to your life. And she disregarded me and then lied to me and then did a bunch of other things and then ended up in that situation. That person was a very much, now we're, we're gonna go a few places here. On the 3D, she's dealing with real addictions. On the 5D, she's dealing with addictions too, but family pathology tied into addictions. In the 5D, she's dealing with karmic partnerships. So there's a lot to talk about here. I wanna try to veer back to addiction, but there was, but there was something about this person that put her right into the line of fire and put her into danger where she felt free and I was no longer allowed to really kind of speak into her life and my angels advised me to remove myself not just in the most recent past but as it was happening they said you can't you can't take on her karma you tried to warn her we gave you the car blanche to warn her you she didn't heed it so now she's going to have to walk through this lesson in its fullness and that means that sometimes the addiction will be wonderful and feel good now her addiction too same same we mirror each other we were soulmates so her addiction was absolutely codependent as well but then she added in some drugs and she added in some alcohol and when that happened then the mask slipped that mask that she brilliantly wore for many years came down and she couldn't keep it up anymore and it happened with her offering me a glass of competition she offered me competition like you would offer somebody wine when they come to your house the person that i had told her hey be careful this, it wasn't hate to the person, it was hate to the energy. I understood the energy. I understood the energy more than the person did. I understood it more than she did. I was seeing in the 5D, you are in danger. You know, Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost says, you're in danger, girl. She was in danger, she is in danger. She endangered herself. She endangered her son. She endangered her energy, her vital life source. The devil is cunning and addiction is even more so and the devil traffics in addiction because that's how he can get us out of our state. We can't blame a devil or a God for things we do. We have responsibility and we have self-efficacy and we have people that speak into our lives that usually warn us before we jump off of a cliff and I was one of those people. I, she may have had more, but I know for sure I was one. And she did what most people in addiction do when they want to be in the delicious magic of the addiction in all of its ways. She pushed me away and was cruel and mean and devaluing. So I got to see her real covert narcissistic side. And I know that it's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Was she always a covert narcissist and had hit it so well? Well, narcissists are you know, notorious for having masks and then the mask slips. It's part of the vernacular in the narc empath community, right? But what I realized is that the addiction colliding with her narcissism was what made me see clearly because when you love somebody, you don't see clearly. And it's what made me see clearly, oh, we're dealing with a demon of a different color here. We're dealing with a demon with different stripes. We're dealing with something that is going to take her completely out of herself. Completely out of herself. When she offered me the competition, she did it after I'd arrived to her house. She wouldn't let me in for a few hours because she was on the phone devaluing me with this person and drinking. Um, imagine that, traveling nine, ten hours to someone's house. You're sick. 
I was on the heels of what I now believe was COVID. It was at the beginning of this year, February, right before we understood what was going on and about to happen here in our country. And I had gone to the hospital because I was having autoimmune issues that were triggered by her because I was so worried about her codependency in full effect. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the hospital over the last year over her. Um, not something she knows. Not something I told her because I felt like it was going to feed her covert narcissism. I think she would have gotten too much delight out of it, which made me so sick to think. But what I realized is that I had left the hospital, got the flu or COVID, whatever. And it was the worst flu I've ever had in my life. And I hitched a ride because I was out of, without a vehicle at the time to her house. And when I arrived... I was considerate, got a hotel because we arrived to meet the friend and I that went uh, road tripping with me about three in the morning. And when we got there, um, we got a hotel uh, and I texted her that morning at eight, hey, going to be at your house by 10 and just meet me at the public because she was very private. She didn't want anybody to know where she lived for various reasons. And I waited at the Publix. One hour goes by and two hours go by. And then she finally texts me and she says, it's going to be too much trouble to take your luggage from her vehicle to my vehicle and then into my house. So I'm just going to get over myself. Why don't you have her drop you off? What she couldn't say, and I didn't know, is that she was three sheets to the wind, had three quarters quarters of um, uh, a fifth of vodka that she had downed. I didn't notice it till I got inside of the house. She couldn't just tell me I'd been drinking and I was flirting and cupcaking with this very toxic person in my life, making her feel safe because she was very threatened about you coming. And when I got inside and I watched her fumbling, I realized she was drunk. And it was so, it was like a slow rolling train, I thought. How have I never seen this before? Have I not ever noticed? She couldn't, I, I'm ridiculous. And I said I had some seltzer water to her house since I would be staying there. And she was trying to do the nice thing and be hospitable and offer me a drink. That was one thing I could say is in her better days, she was very hospitable. Not in the last few years, but she was distracted. So she offers me this drink and we proceed to drink together because I'm thinking, oh, I'm seeing my friend and we're going to have one day of partying. I was up there for a medical procedure, so everything had to happen in like 24 hours span so I could kind of get my life together for that procedure the following week. And I'm listening to her and as she, she's drunk, she's drunk and she's really drunk. And she says to me, uh, this girl that I had warned her about is so jealous that we are going out. Can she come with us? She just wants to come. Now, my way is I'm conflict avoidant. So if I had a friend that I knew was jealous of another friend, I'm usually trying to protect the energies of it. I don't talk about it. I don't throw it in anybody's face, right? But she was wanting all of that attention. Remember what I said about putting out fires and needing a lot? Covert narcissists and narcissists need a lot of attention. And so, she was riling up her wife, her lover, which she thought I was unaware of the situation, which is just ridiculous. And was, but, but the liquor told, <laughs> the addictions told, the Adderall, the alcohol, the God knows what else it told. And I'm not hating if you party, okay? But I have to say what I was dealing with. The pills in various forms, they told. It wasn't just that. And she looked at me and slurred all drunkenly, competition? When I told her, well, we're gonna go out with this other friend tonight. Why don't we do that? And the next time I'm up here, we can go out with this other friend. Knowing I had no intention to deal with that other friend because I understood that she was dealing with a very, you're on a spiritual channel. So I'm seeing the spiritually a demonic possession was happening. I understood that she was dealing with somebody who was very lecherous and murderous and did not like me and was vehemently opposed to me for racist reasons, for jealous reasons, for fill-in-the-blank reasons. She didn't like that we were friends because she wanted to be 
primary. I mean, it is what it is. And uh, I understand that. That's competition. That's the nature of competition. She was also a lower vibrational Scorpio energy, which literally traffics in possession, obsession, especially when they're not evolved. So I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think my friend knows what she's dealing with. Well, her defenses were down because she was fully in her addiction. And that's when the masks slipped. Competition? A question. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> I thought... I have loved you for 20 years. I've helped you raise your child. I have helped you financially when I could. And as life got better for me, I did. I have been thoughtful. I have been considerate. I have been empathetic. I have been a therapist. I have been a friend. I have kept our boundaries when you would hurl yourself at me like a missile because the liquor was too good and the fetish was so strong that you had for me. I maintained our balance in all ways. And... Here you are offering me competition to who? For what? As the, as the meme says, they wear. <laughs> what competition? But that was a moment that freed me because I realized that all of the things that I had been going through in my mind about trying to understand why I felt like she was being so mean and so devaluing, that's the word. And I struggled with it. I got into therapy. I didn't tell her about it before I got into therapy so that I could really work through it. And I realized about a year before that moment happened who I was dealing with. And I still loved her and I held on. That's me. That's my addiction. That was my codependency. That was my bad. But I still held on because I thought, no, I have to just make sure and see for myself. Well, I saw for myself she was fully in addiction, but she was fully in covert narcissism. She needed fuel. I was her supply. I was a delicious supply, her favorite supply, a juicy supply. She will not have supply like that. And I don't say that as like a badge of honor. I feel like a fool for having been that supply. Don't be a fool, guys. When you realize that someone is using you for that, but also triangulating you and doing all of that stuff, that moment in her house, that first 15 minutes, Think about that, the devaluing, being treated like a dog, left outside for hours. I had a friend giving me a ride across several states who had to drive back home by herself, but was kept by the inconsideration of an addict. Addicts are not considerate people. So she didn't care. She was living her best life and flirting and cupcaking with her lover. I said, wow, this is a powerful lesson for me. And she didn't want me to be upset with her, but she left me outside like a dog. I probably will never forget that. I maybe have said it too many times, but that's when the mask slipped. slipped. That behavior was only able to happen because she felt empowered while she was drinking and she was in love and she was happy. And so my feelings, my time, my energy didn't matter. To add insult to injury, she had wanted me to come up there. She booked it for Valentine's Day weekend because what's one more head game while we're at it, okay? So she booked it for that weekend so I'd be away from my husband. It was completely destabilizing. She knew exactly what she was doing in her sober moments. And she thought, ah, what delicious sources I will get. I have this girl over here who's in love with me and messing up her marriage, not me somebody else. I have this girl who loves me and has been my best friend for 20 years. And she's also protective over me in a way that makes me feel very loved and special and, and taken care of in a way that I never felt with my, my adopted parents or with my other situations. And I have the perfect storm and I can treat her terribly, which she proceeded to do for the rest of the week. Lots of covert narcissist behavior, silent treatment, yelling, projecting. You know, when someone's cheating or being bad or behaving badly or in addiction, they will project. And I will never forget this moment. Both hands slapped down on the kitchen counter, her leaning forward at me and bellowing, you make me feel like shit. Excuse me? She'd never spoken to me that way. She'd been mean, she'd been abrupt, she'd been curt, she'd done the silent treatment, but she'd never spoken to me that way. And I was like, oh, this mask is off now, isn't it, baby? It's all the way off. In the 3D, I heard her say that you make me feel like shit. In the 5D, I heard the warbling depths and gro groaning of 
demons. I heard like, that's what I heard. I heard a noise that was otherworldly and I thought, well, the song that I heard when she did it, I sat back in my chair. It's a God of angels above all majesty. You are holy. I need you to protect me right now. I call an Archangel Michael, the cord cutter, the sword swinger. I called in Metatron, the powerful dispeller of energy, and I said, and I heard the song by Rory. You better run, run from the devil. I know that my angels were speaking to me, but I knew that the song was also for she because she was under demonic possession so strong. I knew that our friendship did not have long. I knew that in her house I could not stay because she had gone in an evil way, off into a path that led her beyond astray. You better run from the devil. The devil's in the details, the devil's in the pills, the devil's in the alcohol, the devil's in that hot sex she had that week she thought I didn't know about, in that hot van, in her office, outside of the office, violating all of the codes of conduct, because when you're in addiction, codes of conduct don't matter. You better run from the devil. A year before when I got into therapy, she declared to me that she was the bad guy. Billie Eilish's song, super popular that year. And um, we were all the bad guys, weren't we? But she really embraced it. I'll never forget it. It was my birthday. It was my freedom date. It was my emancipation. And she said to me, I'm the bad guy. She loved other people's marriages and being in them. She embraced her Jezebel spirit. But with the addiction, when she watered it with pills and alcohol, it flourished and grew into a monster that consumed her life. Consumed her life. Consumed other people's lives. Consumed other people's lovers. Consumed other people's drugs. Consumed her integrity, her dignity. Allowed her to use her body like she would launch at me as a missile with other people. But this time it was used to pay her bills. When you're in addiction, none of these things seem like they're strange or too far-fetched. It feels very normal. It feels very normal. It feels like it's just an even exchange. That same day, where the mask slipped, there, was a, oh, there were a lot of things that I got to see. And one of them was a moment I call fancy. Here's your last chance, fancy, don't let me down. If you know the song... You know the context. It's YouTube, so I won't get too deep. Google its meaning. Google what it means. She was dealing with family pathology that was playing itself out. She was being a covert narcissist to another lovely friend who may hate me or not because flying monkeys exist. But I thought she was a good person and I thought she was a sweetheart. She was very intelligent and uh, she was blowing her off and I was like, don't blow her off. We've been planning this for months. We're going to go out. We'll figure it out. Let's at least let her come here. I, compassionate, considerate empath, wanted to make sure that we didn't treat this person badly. And she said, it's okay. We'll just cancel. Let your people please. And you know, covert nerves know exactly where to pit. And um, then she hustled me. She hustled me like I was a John looked at me right in my eyes and was like, baby, I just need you to pay for lunch tomorrow because da 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 da. Best friends in town, I wasn't going to pay anyway. I was looking at her and I was sad because the mask was gone. I thought, you don't have to do this. Don't do this. Don't hustle me like I'm a John. I'm not a John. I'm your friend. I would do anything for you within reason. Anything but invalidate my own boundaries and jeopardize my integrity. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. But when the alcohol was in and the pills were in and the demons had taken hold, the lines blurred and she forgot who I actually was in the spirit world and who I actually was in her life and confused me for someone she was hustling. 
And maybe she wasn't confused at all because she was hustling me. She was hustling everybody. She was lying to everybody because that's what addictions do. People can have their opinions of our ending and it's a warped opinion because she gave her perspective without telling any truths because she told the truth to nobody, not her son, not her parents, not her lover, not her friend lovers. Y'all, let me just be real. Not her lovers, not her friends. No one knows who she is. Talented Mrs. Ripley. Covert narcissist. Con artist. Sociopath. That's what's on her resume as far as I'm concerned. None of us are irredeemable. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But in this situation, she's going to have to claw her way from hell. She's got herself in a predicament and it breaks my heart. But do we have pity for narcissists and covert narcs? Because they know what they're doing. She was so incredibly unkind. That's me being as diplomatic as possible. I feel the part of me that felt that she was a good human at one point feels terrible for the karma she's incurred. She would say to me, you're wishing karma on me. You're making bad things happen to me. Covert narcs and narcs never take responsibility for their terrible freaking behavior. No, I wasn't wishing anything bad on you. In fact, I only wanted the best for you. I only wanted you to succeed, but you got to get yourself together. She's watching right now. Get yourself together for him and for you. You had one job and now it's time to do it. You can keep running into the arms it's not, you're not running into the arms of the angel, mama. You're running into the arms of the devil. And you could let people get in your head about me being in your head, which is just so, ah. Uh, didn't you realize that you were being snack? Didn't you realize that you were dealing with Carol Baskins and you're Joe Exotic? She's smarter. She was a malignant narcissist. I tried to tell you, I tried to warn you, I wanted to help you, but... You didn't want my help, so you had to walk through it. I've been through that. I never would expect this from you, but I know what you're capable of now. I know you don't have to write me a letter. You don't have to apologize. You don't have to do anything. My apologies came from the angels. It's a much better apology, trust me. <sighs> You'll stay in that as long as you need to stay in that. And she can think whatever she needs to think. I didn't want you to not have people that loved you. I wanted you to be safe and not get snacked by Carol Baskins. <laughs> Yo, you got snacked by Carol Baskins. That's what happens when a malignant narc and a covert narc meet their match. Someone's going to get snacked. And you were the snack, mama. You were the snack. And the reason you got snacked is because you were in lower vibration. Because she wanted you to be in isolation. Do you remember how she devalued me? You remember how you devalued me to her? Delightfully gossiping, titillating energy. She's such a bore. She's so, so mean, so ridiculous. That's fair. I'll take that. But you got to take your life back. I'm not going to be there to help you with it. You're going to have to do this on your own. Sorry, guys, if you're watching. I needed to let her know. I had to dry that love up. Just like you're going to have to dry out. You're going to have to figure that out. Or you're going to be on intervention. Or on punch drunk love. Or doing things that you never thought you would do. Because that is the devil. You remember your Christianity. The devil will take you further than you want to go, make you pay more than you want to pay, and have you stay longer than you ever thought you would stay. You could stay with Carol Baskins for 10 years, but the ending will always be the same. Carol Baskins fed him to the tiger, snacked him. You're with a hyena. You fancy yourself a wolf, lithe, cunning, good-looking. Yeah, a hyena will eat your guts while you're alive and cackle to hellhounds.
cackle with a thousand demons coursing through its body and your blood dripping from its fangs. It's not too dramatic. You've met your match, except she's better. That's karma. Anyway, guys, that's what happens when you're in addiction. The uh, mask will slip and you'll get snapped by an entity who is legion. Yeah? Legion. Fortunately, I have an army of angels and ancestors. And they told me to get out. They said run from Jody Arias and Betty Brodrick before these two crazy, addicted, obsessed people snack you. Let them snack each other. Let them be each other's karma. And they will be. Don't know how that's going to end for you, but you better pull it together quickly. Pay attention if you have someone in your life who is both a covert or overt malignant narc and if they are dealing with any addictions because what will happen is the energy transference of their terrible karma will come onto you. I have another video coming up about that, but the truth of it is I had to detach myself. That's not for me. You don't compete if you don't compare. Join me next time and we'll continue to evolve together.